All right, so I want to say something about kind of where we go from here. Um, uh, you know, maybe a, a little spiel for 10 minutes uh, uh, about this. Look, I mean, the state of American politics is abysmal. And those of you who are happy because Biden uh, completely self-destructed yesterday, uh, you know, there's something wrong with you. Because the fact is that all that is, is it reinforces and, and uh, c commits us to a presidency of uh, Donald Trump. And you might say he's better than Biden, but to be happy about that is something's off, something's wrong. We have a dysfunctional political system, but really what we have is a dysfunctional culture. We have a culture that has been come unmoored, unmoored from its, um, from its founding principles. A culture and a politics that have become completely separate, completely contradictory to the very essence, the very nature, the very characteristics of this country, what made this country great. We have a culture that's un-American, and we have politicians who are un-American. We have a political system. The system itself is still somehow holding together, but we have the participants in the American system who are un-American. Oh, and then Troy also did 500 Australian dollars. Thank you, Troy. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Hopefully, I'll get to meet Troy in Brisbane. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if I'm going to Brisbane. I'm, I'm not yet sure. So while we still call this the United States of America, this country is lost. It is lost. It is drifting. It has a vague recollection of the founders, a vague recollection of a constitution and a declaration of independence. I mean, the Supreme Court seems to have some respect for the separation of powers, but not much more than that. Certainly not for the idea of individual rights. And the idea of individual rights is what makes America, America. The idea of individualism of individual self-reliance, of the individual setting his course in life and living free to live the kind of course that he sets, live the kind of life that he determines for himself. That is what makes America. The force, the coercion, the manipulation at every step by the federal government, by state governments, by local governments, of every step from abortion to trade is on American. The vilification of immigrants to this country is un-American. People accuse me of, oh my God, open borders. America had open borders for the first 100 years and really had open borders for the first 150 years of its existence. Unless you were Chinese. And, and there you were restricted from 1896, I think it was. We had basically open borders until 1921, or 24, 21 and then 24, where there were restrictions. Was that such a horrible period in American history? Well, no. All of these things are just un-American. You could argue, look, there's a welfare state. We should really argue to get rid of the welfare state so that we don't have to be encumbered with paying Welfare to immigrants. Fine. Get that. Oh, you know, the immigrants really are burden on government education, so let's fight to get rid of government education. Fine. But the, you know, just the uh, um, ugliness of the vilification of immigrants today in America is a fundamental anti-American sign. And people who do it are anti-American. They reject the very essence of America. So what do you do? What do you do today? Well, there is only one thing we can do. 
And that is, in a sense, to start over with American ideals. It's not to run around celebrating that Trump is going to be president. That is, should be beneath the people who support in any way this show. It should be beneath any American with a capital A. We shouldn't be celebrating the demise of Joe Biden, the rise of Trump. We shouldn't be, in any of those cases, we might say, okay, it's bought us a little bit more time, maybe. I don't think even that is true. What we need to do, realizing the dire strait that America is in, is go out there and redouble our efforts to change this culture. Redouble our efforts to return America to its principles, to make America principled again, to make Americans identify, focus on, realize the importance of individual rights again. Our job is not to choose between two horrible, evil, disgusting, awful candidates. It's not your job. And to answer Andy, Andy's question, it's absolutely legitimate to abstain. Absolutely legitimate to say I can't vote for either one of these bastards. Ayn Rand did it on several occasions, at least two occasions. She did it in the 50s because she couldn't vote for Eisenhower, and she did it in 1980 because she couldn't vote for Reagan. Imagine, couldn't vote for Reagan. How principled Ayn Rand was. Compare her to people like Scott. So absolutely it is legitimate to abstain. How, how, how many seconds do you think it'll take Scott to say, but, Trump, but, but, but Peacock supports Trump? <laughs> I mean, I give it like 30 seconds. He's probably already typed it. Maybe he's now deleting it. <laughs> um, so forget about politics. Forget about politics. Yeah. That's a, yeah, anyway. Uh, what we need to do is advocate for the right ideas. We need to wake up. Whatever is left of the American sense of life and the American spirit, if anything is left of it. There is no alternative, no shortcut, no other way other than to start educating the American people about what America is, what America stands for, what this country is about, what the principle of individual rights is and what it requires. And that doesn't mean give me a laissez-faire capitalist economy, uh, laissez-faire capitalist government tomorrow or else. No, it means let's start educating people about the steps, the small steps, including Chevron, that doing away with Chevron that are necessary to move us towards greater freedom and greater liberty, step by step. It's not going to happen in a day. It can't happen in a day. Let's talk about what that looks like. What kind of laws can be repealed? What kind of regulatory agencies can be abolished? How do we privatize education? How do we get rid of government involvement in education? We need to promote a politics of freedom, a politics of liberty. Rather than endorse or celebrate or engage in the politics of today, right now, which are all beneath contempt. So, yeah. Don't disengage from what's going on in our political world. On the contrary, engage. Engage more. 
But engage not at the level of, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, I'm this, I'm that. Don't engage at the level of a tribalist, which is what some people here do. Engage at the level of a critic. Engage at the level of somebody who has better ideas, who knows how the world could and should be. Engage at the level of somebody who can go out there and at least talk about what America is really about. Talk about liberty and freedom and individual rights and limited government and what, what freedom means and its value and why it's important. I mean, if you can and want, talk about reason, talk about rationality, absolutely. Talk about egoism, absolutely. But even if it's just at the political level, which is easier for most of us, talk about the value of America, the value of this country, not as a beautiful scenery and as respect for God, but as the country that for the first time in history recognized that government must be limited, limited, by the, limited to the protection of individual rights, limited by the principle of individual rights, limited in its function, limited in its abilities. Right. Educate, educate, educate. And you educate every time you speak up. Every time you make an unpopular declaration of principle, you educate. Anytime you object to the status quo and provide principled argument in opposition to it, you are educating. Anytime you write, anytime you speak, anytime you write, anytime you speak, in a principled way, based on the ideas of individual rights, based on the ideas of the Declaration of Independence. You educate people out there. You make the world a slightly better place. You give us hope for better political future than we seemingly have today. And when you stay quiet, or we, when you, like some, cheer and rally for clearly a horrible candidate, because he's against the other tribe, you diminish your ability to educate. You diminish your ability to change anything. You become one of the mob, one of the tribe, and you're useless, completely useless for having any impact on the world. Because if we're going to come out of this on the other side in better shape, it is only if people speak up. It is only if people like you work to educate the American public. I mean, think about the Federalist paper. Think about the debates, the discussions, the intellectuality of it, the founders, how much work they put up, and what risks they took to do it, to fight for this country, to create this country, to make this country what it is. We're at an existential point in this country where the country is going to hell. You got to be inspired by them to at least stand up and speak. Nobody's asking you to take a gun and go fight. But stand up and speak. Stand up and object. Say, you know, I'm voting for Trump, but he's horrible. He's terrible. He's despicable. This is what I hope the Republican Party will do in the future. Can't say anything about that. I mean, think you're wrong, but it doesn't matter. That's okay. But to only attack one side, to not recognize any faults, to not speak on principle, to not talk about principles, to not discuss principles, it's to abandon your responsibility for your own future. It's to not to be selfish. It's not to be egoistic. And it's, it's, it's not to be rational.
So I don't care who you vote for. I really don't at this point because Trump has won, so it doesn't really matter. What I care about is what you say. That's what matters. It's what arguments you make. It's what positions you take. It's what principles you advocate for. The actual pulling the lever makes zero difference. Your vote won't matter anyway. It's not, no election is one by one vote. So it's time to continue to speak, to talk, to educate, to stand on principle, to argue, and to criticize. Be a critic. Criticize everybody whenever they're wrong. Doesn't matter who they are. Criticize them when they're wrong. And in politics today, everybody is wrong. So you've got to criticize everybody. They almost never say anything that is right or true or based on the right ideas. So what do we need today? We need a revolution. And you guys are not ready for an armed revolution. You have no idea what that takes and what that means. And you're not capable of it. And there are not enough of you. So the kind of revolution we need is the kind of revolution we've needed for a long time. It's an intellectual revolution. But it's time to think of yourself as revolutionaries, radicals, not status quo, establishment, uh, uh, you know, tribalists. Radicals for liberty. Radicals for individualism. Radicals for reason. Radicals. Let's build a movement of radicals who do not accept compromise, who speak out no matter what, who are not going to be silenced, who criticize everybody who deserves to be criticized, and who stand for the truth who stand for the individual, who stand for freedom and liberty. That's what we need. That's where we need to go. And I think ultimately we'll win, but it's going to require that. <laughs>